My name is Ms. Kusufei Tita Lantina, and I belong to the RAM group. The title of my expressive reading is, I'm different. This is something I have known for as long as I can remember. You see, I was the kid who couldn't just sit still and focus. My fingers were always tapping on something. Well, my mind changed thoughts like channels. I was the kid who couldn't just shut up. My constant refrain of why often led getting into trouble and sometimes yelled at my teachers. I was the kid who would wear bright colors and burst out singing. La 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 la! Making me an easy target for bullying! I was the kid who hoped the scream of music I listened to would drown the barrage of unwanted thoughts that had burst into my head. Thoughts that would make me wash my hands so much and so hard that they would start to bleed. I was the kid who no matter how hard I shed my eyes and tried to sleep, just couldn't keep dark and twisted thoughts from flying through my mind. I was the kid who tried as hard as I could to fit in, but no matter what I did, I always found myself in the outs. I was the kid who was different. The gap between normal and me. All of these issues would add up to the feeling that I was truly alone. It was like there was the whole world and there was me. But as I continued to struggle with learning disabilities and an assortment of other similar challenges, all I kept seeing was an ever-widening separation between normal and me. But what if we are all different? What I didn't know is that everybody feels like this in various moments of life. All of us have disruptions in our lives that make us feel different. For me, it was grips and learning disabilities and mental illness. Maybe for you, it's addiction, abuse, fractured family, sexual identity, anxiety, or a plethora of other things. These issues can make us feel so bad broken, foolish, that at the end of the day, we think that we are truly alone, on the outside, and irreconceivably different. Often, those feelings would overwhelm me. Trusted people in my life would encourage me to open the Bible. I fought it for the longest time, wondering what good could it possibly accomplish in such a face of a daunting struggle. However, when I finally did, I found myself continually surprised. I had always thought that God is a certain kind of person, one who fits into the mold of good Christians. However, as I turned through the pages of the good book, I found the exact opposite. I found story after story, broken, crazy, sinful, doubting, struggling outcasts that God decided to use instead of perfect people. And more often than not, it wasn't in spite of their differences, but because of them, God 
use these people. Peter could just stop talking. Jesus used his gift of God to spread the truth across the world. Paul was a nerdy know-it-all. God used him to teach the truth to millions. Mary was a simple woman. God used her humility to bear the Savior into the world. Rahab was amorous. God used her charm to protect an entire nation. John the Baptist was crazed and ate bugs. God used his attention-grabbing personality to proclaim Christ's arrival. I could go on and on. What I'm struck with in each of these stories is a different part that played in the lives of these heroes that God used. How God can use my differences for His glory. While it's been a long and challenging journey, I can look at my life now and see how all the different things with which I used to struggle with have been the things that have enabled me to tell my unique story. My unbridled energy gives me the ability to keep on going while others grow weary. My chaotic mind gives me the capacity to come up with creative ideas. Obsessive thoughts help to remind me that life can be lived a thoughtful and intentional way. Being different isn't easy. It can sometimes be a lonely path. But those differences are often the condolence through which God will help us tell our unique stories. God can use us not just in spite of our differences, but because of them, I'm different.